The fourth and final part begins now. Introduction to Evolution From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia en.wikipedia.org Section 6 Co-Evolution Co-evolution is a process in which two or more species influence the evolution of each other. All organisms are influenced by life around them. However, in co-evolution, there is evidence that genetically determined traits in each species directly resulted from the interaction between the two organisms. An extensively documented case of co-evolution is the relationship between pseudomermex, a type of ant, and the acacia, a plant that the ant uses for food and shelter. The relationship between the two is so intimate that it has led to the evolution of special structures and behaviors in both organisms. The ant defends the acacia against herbivores and clears the forest floor from the seeds of competing plants. In response, the plant has evolved swollen thorns that the ants use as shelter and special flower parts that the ants eat. Since co-evolution does not imply that the ants and the tree choose to behave in an altruistic manner. Rather, across a population, small genetic changes in both ant and tree benefited each. The benefit gave a slightly higher chance of the characteristic being passed on to the next generation. Over time, successive mutations created the relationship we observe today. Section 7 Species Given the right circumstances and enough time, evolution leads to the emergence of new species. Scientists have struggled to find a precise and all-inclusive definition of the word species. Ernst Marr defined a species as the population or group of populations whose members have the potential to interbreed naturally with one another to produce viable fertile offspring. The members of a species cannot produce viable fertile offspring with members of other species. Marr's definition has gained wide acceptance among biologists, but does not apply to organisms such as bacteria, which reproduce asexually. Speciation is the lineage splitting event that results in two separate species forming from a single common ancestral population. A widely accepted method of speciation is called allopatric speciation. Speciation. Allopatric speciation begins when a population becomes geographically separated. Geological processes, such as the emergence of mountain ranges, geological processes, such as the emergence of mountain ranges, the formation of canyons, or the flooding of land bridges by changes in sea level, may result in separate populations. For speciation to occur, separation must be substantial so that genetic exchange between the two populations is completely disrupted. In their separate environments, the genetically isolated groups follow their own unique evolutionary pathways. Each group will accumulate different mutations as well as be subjected to different selective pressures. 
the accumulated genetic changes may result in separated populations that can no longer interbreed if they are reunited. Barriers that prevent interbreeding are either prezygotic, preventing mating or fertilization, or postzygotic, barriers that occur after fertilization. If interbreeding is no longer possible, then they will be considered different species. The result of four billion years of evolution is the diversity of life around us, with an estimated 1.75 million different species in existence today. Usually, the process of speciation is slow, occurring over very long time spans. Thus, direct observations within human lifespans are rare. However, speciation has been observed in present-day organisms, and past speciation events are recorded in fossils. Scientists have documented the formation of five new species of child fishes, a new species of fishes, from a single common ancestor that was isolated fewer than 5,000 years ago from the parent stock in Lake Nagubago. The evidence for speciation in this case was morphology, physical appearance, and lack of natural interbreeding. These fish have complex mating rituals and a variety of colorations. The slight modifications introduced in the new species have changed the mate selection process, and the five forms that arose could not be convinced to interbreed. Section 8. Mechanism. The theory of evolution is widely accepted among the scientific community, serving to link the diverse speciality areas of biology. Evolution provides the field of biology with a solid scientific base. The significance of evolutionary theory is best described by the title of a paper by Theodosius Dobzhansky, published in American Biology Teacher, titled, Nothing in Biology Makes Sense Except in the Light of Evolution. Nevertheless, the theory of evolution is not static. There is much discussion within the scientific community concerning the mechanisms behind the evolutionary process. For example, the rate at which evolution occurs is still under discussion. In addition, there are conflicting opinions as to which is the primary unit of evolutionary change, the organism or the gene. Rate of change. Darwin and his contemporaries viewed evolution as a slow and gradual process. Evolutionary trees are based on the idea that profound differences in species are the result of many small changes that accumulate over long periods. Gradualism had its basis in the works of the geologists James Hutton and Charles Lyell. Hutton's view suggests that profound geological change was the cumulative product of a relatively slow, continuing operation of processes which can still be seen in operation today as opposed to catastrophism, which promoted the idea that sudden changes which can no longer be seen at work. A uniformitarian perspective was adopted for biological changes. Such a view can seem to contradict the fossil record, which often shows evidence of new species appearing suddenly then persisting in that form 
for long periods. In the 1970s, paleontologists Niles Eldridge and Stephen J. Gould developed a theoretical model that suggests that evolution, although a slow process in human terms, undergoes periods of relatively rapid change, ranging between 50,000 and 100,000 years, alternating with long periods of relative stability. Their theory is called, quote, punctuated equilibrium, end quote, and explains the fossil record without contradicting Darwin's ideas. Unit of Change A common unit of selection in evolution is the organism. Natural selection occurs when the reproductive success of an individual is improved or reduced by an inherited characteristic, and reproductive success is measured by the number of an individual's surviving offspring. The Organism view has been challenged by a variety of biologists as well as philosophers. Richard Dawkins, born 1941, proposes that much insight can be gained if we look at evolution from the genes point of view, that is, that natural selection operates as an evolutionary mechanism on genes as well as organisms. In his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene, he explains, quote, Individuals are not stable things. They are fleeting. Chromosomes, too, are shuffled to oblivion, like hands of cards soon after they are dealt. But the cards themselves survive the shuffling. The cards are the genes. The genes are not destroyed by crossing over, they merely change partners and march on. Of course they march on. That is their business. They are the replicators, and we are their survival machines. When we have served our purpose, we are cast aside. But genes are denizens of geological time. Genes are forever. End quote. Others view selection working on many levels, not just at a single level of organism or gene. For example, Stephen J. Gould called for a hierarchical perspective on selection. We now come to the end of the fourth and final part of the spoken version of the Wikipedia article, Introduction to Evolution. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at http colon slash slash creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.